Hi everyone! Hello, hello, hello! Oh, this is bright. It's too bright in here. <laughs> Hi everyone! How are we? I'm okay. How are you? <laughs> Cleaning with vinegar. How did we get there? <laughs> Come later. Are you having it? Bless you there. Okay. <laughs> So we are right now in my utility room. Hi everyone. Hi, good morning, Cindy. And we're not going to stay here. Uh, we are going to go to the kitchen, but I just thought, um, you know, <laughs> I would start here because um, I am going to wash my blanket. Um, so I'm going to put it in the machine. It's down here. And hi Amy, hi Diana, and um, I will just put it in the machine and then when it's finished I'll come and get it and so I can show you what it looks like when it's washed and then I'll also show you how I dry it. I don't know what, how I'm going to do that but there you go, okay. Now, just a word about this black thing here, okay. Um, it's my internet cable. <laughs> So everything I'm saying is going through there to you guys. <laughs> As you know, we're planning an extension and our internet cable outside really needed replacing. So I sort of got that organised. But of course, they didn't want to put it in there in the place that it had to go because we're going to take away that wall where the uh, internet cable is going to go. So for now, it's there. <laughs> We've just got it running along uh, the wall. They've given us a little bit extra so that um, when we're building, the builders can just lay it where it needs to go. <laughs> but for now, I have to put up with that thing there. <laughs> anyway, so yes, so many of you have noticed that, yes, look at this. There is a blanket with the new colour proper purple. And of course, I have been able to make this because you are all working on the cal. And of course, my work with the cal was basically done. Um, so I've taken the chance of I've I've taken the opportunity to also just sit down and do this blanket. And it's been great because I've had uh, uninterrupted crochet time. Um, you know, of course, interrupted by, you know, your text messages and all the you know, posts that you've done um, on Facebook, but it was just nice for me to also sit and crochet. So yes, yeah, so this is one of my grandma's stitches. Um, so we are, yes, we are washing the blankets today. We, I'm going to tell you exactly how I wash this. This is Starcraft Special DK. I ordered the new colours. I ordered loads of one colour because I just loved that purple. So yes, I've already made this. I am going to be filming tomorrow uh, the tutorial so that it comes out quite quickly after the cal has finished because of course you've got a cup a week or so to go with the cal. So after that is finished, hopefully soon after that you will have instruction for how to make this blanket okay but of course yes I have to work in advance because there's so you know there is a lot of work if you're making the whole blanket so that's why I took this time uh, to do that so we've got one finished blanket the ends have all been sewn in uh, I have here my sort of my uh, products that I use for uh, <laughs> Yeah, I've been trying to keep up with you guys <laughs> uh, for washing. And this is the infamous, the infamous vinegar, okay? This is the Star Drops vinegar that I buy in Home Bargains. It costs 79p. So it doesn't cost more than a pound for a bottle, okay? And I have, hi Rena, nice to see you. I have looked up on Amazon how much it would be to buy these. Guess what? Un 
unbelievable two pounds three pounds five pounds six pounds 11.99 for six bottles which still makes it two pounds do not buy it like that okay go to a shop whenever you're next in a shop like that buy it there 79p it's it's not going to break the bank okay uh, the other day i went to home bargains and i got six bottles and that's what i do sort of every month i go to um, a place like that like home bargains the range and i sort of stock up on all those things right so if you are in america obviously this is in the uk so if you are in america i don't know whether you'll be able to find this brand but it's a white vinegar and it's not food grade so it is for um, not for human com consumption okay yes so but christine i don't use the spray i unscrew it and i pour it okay i wish i could find a bottle top that didn't have this on but that fitted this top and then i could just use that um, I do not use the spray. It's too time consuming and it's not enough comes out basically. So there is, I'll show you in a moment in my kitchen. There is a difference between food grade vinegar and cleaning vinegar. And um, years ago I had to use food grade vinegar because that was all there was. And now there is cleaning vinegar. The um, strength. I remember the food grade that I used to use was 7%, 7 sort of degrees or something, um, but less than 5%. No, less than 5% perf. Is that perfume? Oh, I don't know. No, it doesn't say, it doesn't say the degrees of, of strongness. Um, obviously, this is not going to be as strong as the cleaning, the food grade vinegar that you can buy but it's it's a good alternative and it's cheap i mean the normal food grade yeah six or seven percent yes that would be the one that you would be using yeah um i also use pods for my laundry powder okay so these are the little pods that i use and they are called small they come every month by post so I don't have to buy them in the shop. I have a subscription for them and they just, actually this was delivered today. Um, and they just, they fit through the post box and you pay for it. And I don't think that this is more expensive than buying the normal one because A, you always have some in the house. You can't forget to buy it because that's what was, was happening. I f was forgetting to buy it. And this is really well concentrated. It works for me. It works perfectly. Okay, so it's fine for me. It's fine. I also use the dishwasher tablets from that. So every month I get the laundry pods and the dishwasher pods. And you don't have to have a stack in the house. Um, you work out how many washers you do every month, and then it, they just send it to you, and you pay for it. And I'm I'm fine with that. Okay. So I start with putting this first in your, in your, uh, here, drum. So open this up. That goes in first. I think they're about three pounds per month that I pay for them, uh, Amanda. So, sorry. <laughs> then I put the blanket in. So first the pod, then the blanket. I also have a towel from my hair earlier, so I'm going to just put that in there as well. I always try and put something with it, just so not just the blanket, but a towel just to, you know, help it along a bit. So that's inside the drum, okay. Then here we have my thing here. I'm going to take it out so I can show you. Okay, so this is your drawer. This is number one. This is your pre-wash. This is your main. So this is where you would have put your soap if you ha didn't have your pod. And this is here. This is where I put my conditioner. See, this is the fabric conditioner symbol. But of course, I don't use fabric conditioner. I use my 
vinegar instead okay so what i am going to do today because no that doesn't work like this because it's a dark purple blanket okay it's a dark purple blanket i want to set the colors and the vinegar will set the colors and make it soft so i am going to um pour in let me just use the other one because that's nearly finished i'm going to pour in vinegar into the first one okay so the first container here which is what goes in straight away i'm going to fill that up with vinegar this is when i washed this the first time you know this jeans dress it was a really nice dark blue or well, it still is but i then put some in that first water so that it sets the colors and then i also fill the conditioner because then it will make it soft so I take this out, basically I unscrew it, take it out, pour it in as much as I think to, for it to fill up because it goes in straight away. Then I fill up the second one as well. Okay, I don't think it was enough. Right, so I'm going to pour some more in that first one because that first one goes straight into the blanket. So that goes straight in, so that will set the colours the conditioner will make it soft so that is sorted so we are going to have the soap inside the vinegar in the first wash and the vinegar at the end okay so now i'm going to close my drawer i have a daily quick on here which is only 30 minutes and that's what i'm going to use for my blankets i'm sure that they'll survive 30 minutes in the machine okay yes it's a spray but i just pour it okay and now i am going to press the start button and it started okay so this should last 30 minutes sometimes when i'm washing dirty clothes or something i will put as a flora in the first one so it disinfects it straight away right but um, yes you can use pure white vinegar okay let me show you let me show you the one that you can use as well okay so close this up let's go to the kitchen because it's just too bright over there oh my goodness right that's better oh my ears were starting to um my ears, my eyes were starting to water there as well. Okay, so I used to use, before I was able to buy the um, cleaning vinegar, I used to use this. In the UK, Sarsen's uh, distilled malt vinegar, but it's white. Okay, you've got to use the white one. The malt one will colour your stuff, okay? So you've got to find, see this is a bottle that I bought and I never used because then I discovered the actual cleaning version. And it might not be as strong or it might not be as, but it's fine, you know, it's much cheaper. This obviously doesn't last me long um, because, you know, it doesn't, um, you know, there's not much in it and it's more expensive. I do, I do, Diana, I do use um, essential oils sometimes, but like I said, this is the first time I'm washing this blanket, so that, that treatment is perfect when you're washing it for the first time, and then afterwards when you wash it, when it just needs washing, um, I'll wash it the same way, I put vinegar in both things, but then when it comes out and it's dry, I'll put some drops of um, essential oil on it, but I have also put it in my washing machine, but it, it doesn't, the smell doesn't linger as much as when you do it just on the blanket and leave it on there for it to, to dry into the fibre, really. So that's that, okay. Now, there's something else. Oh, let me make a cup of tea first. <laughs> Boiling the kettle. Okay, so, blind dip tea. 
things don't change in this household. Oh yeah, can somebody tell me in 30 minutes so I can go and have a look at the washing machine? Because my washing machine doesn't beep when it's finished. I don't know why. It's a nuisance. <laughs> oh, lemon, ginger and honey. Oh, I don't know which one. I've got a lot of lemon, ginger and honey. Oh, rose. Mm. Okay, one from here. What's this? Night time. Oat flower, lavender and lime flower. Oh well, we'll go with it. <laughs> oh dear. Making a cup of tea. Get the honey out. roast after this so I'll need all the energy I can get <laughs> but it does mean if I I'm doing a whole chicken so it does mean if I cook it today so I do all the vegetables um, and then tomorrow we'll just have leftovers yes Amy come and join in I've got I'll set you a seat outside you're more than welcome <laughs> <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get fed outside. <laughs> oh. mm. This is okay. It's a bit. Mm. That's the colour. So, of course, Stella. The more, the merrier. Ellen, yes. Hi, Kenneth. So, actually, Christine, I have to say. I have to say, I have completely abused the situation, right? I have taken so much advantage of this lockdown, right? It's, I shouldn't be saying this, but I have completely, completely stopped cooking during the week. Dirk has been, Dirk has been doing all the cooking. He's been cooking every day, apart, I cook on Saturday and Sunday because he's working. But every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he has been cooking. And I have to say, it has been so good for me. I mean, that's why I've been able to do the, yes. <laughs> that's why I've been, I've been able to do the, the, a lot more crochet. You know, I finished that blanket really, really quickly. Yes, I do give him a hand with um, the washing up, you know, so we sit here, have our dinner, and then I get up and I sort of clear up for him, or sometimes he even clears up. Um, I have been thoroughly spoiled in that way, yes. Since the lockdown, he's been working from home every day, and, excuse me, and he has been so, so good in cooking every day. Um, I have been doing the shopping because I found a supplier where we can just um, have it delivered because we obviously I'm still working I'm we're still doing all kinds of things so you know to go and stand in line in a shop we just don't have the time I can't get a slot from Tesco's but I did find this uh, sort of a I think it's a wholesaler who used to sell just to um, um, restaurants and um, they're now opened up to normal people so um, I have been ordering from them every fortnight we've been getting a huge order and so yesterday we got loads of food and so today I'm cooking that chicken and then I think yeah I'll have dinner for two days so tomorrow will be I'll do loads tomorrow will be leftovers and hopefully we'll have something left over for Monday lunchtime even you know um, but yeah, it's a big chicken, so I thought I'll do that. And I bought loads of meat as well, which we froze. So we are sorted for sort of two weeks, I hope. Um, and yeah, he's been doing so much cooking. It's been wonderful. It really, really has been so great. It has given me a lot of, um, you know, a lot of crochet time. I wonder why, Amanda. Oh, I do wonder why he's, he does the cooking. <laughs> Okay, so let's have a look. I've just made the tea. 
Let me show you the inside of my kettle. Hi, Julie. Okay, that's dripping. I practiced this earlier. Can you see how shiny it is? Go and have a look at the inside of your kettle. How shiny is it? Is there lime scale in your kettle? I have not cleaned this for a long time or for a while. Okay. What I do here is, as you can see, well, I can see it, there's about a, a small cup of hot water left now. Okay. So what I do, I take, oh, Actually, this came from the corner shop even. <laughs> we, in, in Exmouth we have a corner shop and they do all kinds of, um, they do good brands. This is a Russell Hobbs kettle, um, but we, um, I broke the previous kettle, which we had for since we moved in. I broke it because I pressed, yeah, something went wrong. Anyway, it blew. So this was right before lockdown, in fact. So this is quite a new kettle. But what I do with the kettle, yep, vinegar. So there is about a good, a good inch of water, hot water now left in it, okay? So what you do, is this the open one? Oh, it doesn't matter. Let me just get rid of this. What you do is you add another cup of vinegar. Make sure you keep an eye on it. Make sure you always stay with it when you do this, okay? Close it and turn it back on. Bring it to the boil, okay? The less water, the better the effect. Um, and if you have a lot of lime scale, you can do pure vinegar, but stay with it, okay? Because it will bubble up and it will overflow, right? So you have got to stay with it, making sure that you are watching what's happening. And to be honest, you just need you need hottish water. You don't need it boiling, you need hottish, but you can just leave it to boil. See, it's, see, and now, look, 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 can you see? Can you see it is coming up a lot higher than what it would normally do can you see did you see that i don't know i was i was worried <laughs> okay um it foamed up all the way to there can you see the line okay so you then swirl it around and leave it for a while okay i keep swirling it and leave it swirl it and then i tip it out And generally, if you have a lot of white lime scale in there, it will all become loose and it will all float around, okay? So yes, I just read somebody's um, message saying, this is, I don't know where she is, Amy, don't worry. <laughs> um, this is, yeah, it's a cheap way of doing all these things. You know, vinegar doesn't cost much. Just keep an eye on doing this. Do this regularly then you'll never have any lime scale in there, okay? It is not apple cider vinegar, it is just the normal white vinegar that I'm using, okay? Now, I used to use this one for the kettle, but then I just started using this one because it's cleaning vinegar. But of course, if you drink that one, then, you know, it's not too bad. But this one I don't think you should drink, obviously. But I have always, always, whenever I have done this, so now I have water and vinegar in there. You've waited 10, 15 minutes, right? You tip it out. Just pour it in your sink because it's good for your sink as well, okay? And now I boil the kettle three times. So full of water. and you boil it three times. So you fill the whole thing 
and we're going to put it on. It's going to be annoying because we've got all that noise, but then you empty it, you fill it again, boil it, empty it, fill it again. So you'll do this three times, okay? But, but, I don't waste that water. I am going to, I'm not going to, right, okay, I'm not going to leave it to boil out because it makes too much noise. But I don't waste that boiling water because I have another trick up my sleeve. See, here we have, let's show you my sink, shall I? There we go, okay. So here I have my sink, my plug. What I put there is this, okay? Has anybody got these? Do you know what these are? So I have them in a pot like this. I put a few scoops of this in my plug hole. I do this in every plug hole I have. So the sink in the, in the bathroom, the shower, the bath, you know, everywhere. I put quite a few, doesn't matter how many, there we go, okay, four, five sometimes, depending, okay. Then, you take your vinegar, sometimes when you've had, you know, smelly things, I might put some zaflora in there as well, okay, but I don't use that all the time, right. Now, yes, it's like chemistry class, isn't it? Now, vinegar, watch. Watch what happens. So I pour it. Do you see what's happening? It's foaming up. And while it's foaming, it coats your whole drain and it goes down and it's really slow and it does things. So it degreases your plugs, it degreases your drain. Right, let me just pour, put this back on. And if you spray it, oh, turn it on, of course. So generally I will do this for all my plugs. And then, um, look, it's happening again. And I just leave them for a little while. Let me put that kettle back on. <laughs> okay. So you just leave that. So what I do is I do the, um, the kettle. Then I go around doing the plugs. Yes, Ellen, much better. And you're not using chemicals that you're not supposed, I mean, it's smelly here now with the vinegar, but I don't mind smelling that. You know, there's no, no problem uh, breathing in vinegar, really, in comparison to other chemicals that you could be breathing in, okay? So, bye, Julie, talk to you later. <laughs> so let me just, oof. Because I've got a lot to show you. <laughs> so then I wait. Um, it's here, soda crystals. Oh, Patrick, that's great. Ah, oh, okay. But surely chemicals do that as well. When I, you know, before I used to have a septic tank and that's when I used a lot of vinegar as well because, you know, yeah, it's baking soda, yeah. Yeah. Waiting. I can hear my washing machine going as well. <laughs> I shouldn't really think about the fact that there's that brand new blanket in there. Oh! <laughs> oh my goodness me anyway let's not think about that we are cleaning <laughs> okay 
So, another trick I have up my sleeve is this. So you're going to put a little bit of... Oh good, thank you Amanda! Water. Vinegar. So, half water, half vinegar. Lemon. And this, I put this in my microwave for two minutes. We're making noise anyway, so I might as well make some more noise. Okay. That will steam the whole microwave, will get all the bits that are stuck soft, and will make it smell nice. So in a moment I can just go and wipe out the microwave. Now we've got hot water, which we shouldn't drink, because of course there's that vinegar still in there a little bit. And now we are going to pour that, this has had long enough, pour that down the drain, just so all that soda with vinegar can go down the sink and down the plunk hole and disappear. Of course I'm going to have to boil this again twice, so I'm going to not put it on the thing so I'll remember for after. But yeah, that's what I do, so then you know, you're sort of not wasting all that water that you're boiling up because you've cleaned your vinegar, uh, cleaned your kettle. Another thing I do is, do you recognise these? In the UK, we, uh, no, I don't use vinegar there. You can, Dirk will use vinegar on there, but I don't. You can... Um, you can buy like uh, chocolate mousse in these um, as a you know fancy dessert type thing. So we always have loads of these. <laughs> so this fits perfectly in the top rack of my dishwasher. Okay, yeah, a creme brulee glass, right? So your dishwasher, right? It fits straight into sort of a little area there, which is great. So what I do, I fill this to the brim with vinegar. Okay, put this on my top rack of my dishwasher. In the bottom of the dishwasher, I sprinkle this, and I don't sprinkle, I put a good layer, right? And then I put that on a hot, the hottest wash there is, the longest hottest wash. And my dishwasher smells and is clean on the inside, fresh, you know, really, really easy to clean with. You know you can get these cleaning things from the shops, they cost so much money for cleaning your dishwasher. Yeah, I'm going to do that in a moment, I'm going to uh, wipe it down in a minute, the, the steam that we've created. Um, so the dishwasher and the um, washing machine, you wash them by putting vinegar on the inside. So I will put a cup of vinegar into the drum and then this I will put where the washing powder goes, a couple of spoonfuls. Run your hottest wash, just empty, and you will feel and see the difference, smell the difference even when it's finished. So um, there's no need to buy these expensive things that you put in, you know, sort of chemicals or, or strong, I don't know what they are. Um, but, you know, yes, it's a small blue bottle. You put it in upside down. And I mean, I've used it. I have just out of curiosity, really. Um, I have, I've never paid full price for them because I always buy it when it's on special offer. But then I think, why didn't I just use my trick with the uh, vinegar and this? This is much cleaner. So yeah, I did that the other day because I thought I can't do it with it 
you know, with me being here because it just makes too much noise, it's annoying. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I do. This goes in the top like that and then whenever there's some water splashing in, the vinegar will splash out um, and, you know, it will get dispensed sort of thing as and when. Um, and yeah, in your drum the same thing. So you just pour in a, a jug, not a jug, an amount, a small cup of vinegar, put this on in and off you go and both you put them on the hottest wash um, that you have yes yes uh, Patrick I have a front loading washing machine and that's what I do I just put um, probably this much vinegar in and then I put a couple of spoonfuls of this in and yeah in the drawer in the drawer so not inside the drum but you put this in the drawer so you have a slow exposure to you know mixing your two agents there and then of course that helps for making it a longer process for cleaning yeah so if you have like things from the dog or things from you know dirty washing from I don't know you, you know, maybe one of your in one person in your household has a particularly dirty job with construction maybe or you know or you've been outside sweating you know things like that sometimes uh, your washing machine goes a bit funny but also I sometimes also add this just to my washing as well because it helps it I don't know but yeah so there we go so I now have to go and have a look at my so I've got a wet minky I'm gonna have to go and have a look at my microwave here and yeah so now I just wipe it all off I waited a little bit luckily and it's not too hot anymore in here but it's best that you do that when it's nice and hot still so that everything is still um, you know ah, that's cool yeah so that's why I use this <laughs> so I can actually lift it out as well this is actually a milk jug <laughs> but you know yes farm overalls yeah things like that um, so this helps for the micro I'm gonna do it again in a minute and do it again when it's really hot so there we go so yeah so it's the it's the you know it's these little tips that I've been um, here you go, hang on a minute. Um, this is the baking one, okay? This is the cleaning one. Again, there's a difference, okay? This, um, I think this will do the same mish thing because I do know that some vegan recipes ask for uh, vinegar and soda so that it will rise but I wouldn't you know I wouldn't use one for the other basically and certainly not this in cakes okay um, there will be a difference in the way it's treated in the factory I'm sure that this is food grade you know and this is for cleaning obviously it's not as you know it's not for consumption um <laughs> yeah see now my microwave is clean my sink is done my kettle is done <laughs> all in the space of half an hour <laughs> so you know oh, i have been cleaning a little bit more this week but do you know what crochet takes precedence <laughs> And as long as you can have a clean meal, I'm fine. <laughs> no, I mean, my oven needs doing. Um, but yeah, I'll do that um, sort of after the, after the roast because there's no point in doing it beforehand. Um, what I was going to say was keep it clean, okay? You know, you know if you see it like this morning, right? And I didn't sort of... You know, I don't. I didn't do it specially because for um, for this thing this morning. I thought, oh, when I wash up from breakfast because I had a pan to wash up. I thought I'll just do my cooker and my backsplash. You know, and so that's what I do. I do little extra things. 
So for instance, one day a week I will do all the plugs, but then I'll be doing the washing up anyway, you know? Um, and then at some point I'll do the oven, but it'll be after a roast and it'll be, you know? So I sort of try to incorporate a little extra cleaning to keep things clean. I don't actually have big cleaning sessions anymore. I used to spend whole Saturdays cleaning. And I think, why? Why did I do that? Because, you know, if the weather's nice, you want to go outside, you know? Um, why do I have to clean the whole day? So, no, Amanda, scones are for next week. We'll be making scones next week about this time, okay? Um, so I was thinking, you know, if I just keep things clean, then you don't ever, well, you do have to do a big clean. No. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of, you know, of, of where and when I did my last big clean. I just keep it clean. If I see it's dirty, I do it, you know? Um, and, you know, earlier the fruit basket was empty, so I picked it up, saw there was some dust and a bit of thingy bob underneath, thought, okay, we'll just clean that, you know? So, yes, traditional English scones, Patrick. Uh, next week, next week we're going to do scones. So I thought, well, you know, might as well just clean that. And then I clean, I, I rinsed the basket, make sure that it was all dust free. It's outside now and it's drying. So, you know, Veronica, I can still hear it going. It's, it's spinning. I know, I know that, yeah, less traumatic. You don't have that thing in your head where you keep thinking, oh, I've got to keep, I've got to clean, I've got to clean. Yeah, I had that for a while, thinking, but as long as it's clean, nobody's complaining, you know? Um, the fridge and the freezer, I have to, yeah, I, I look at that peri periodically. I do everything, to be honest, but I just don't do it all in one go. Um, the other day, it was I was cooking and I thought, oh, let's look at that. Uh, because I have this sort of big cabinet here, it's got sort of my dry goods. And I just thought, oh, let me rearrange this. And, and I did it. And it took like 20 minutes and it's now nicely rearranged. And it's great, you know. So little and often, a few things here. I see it and I do it. The oven, Raffaella, I keep, I keep my oven clean. It's not so clean now because I knew I was going to do this today and I knew I was going to do a roast and I wanted to do the cleaning afterwards. So I'll do the roast later on. And then once we've finished eating, then uh, little as you go, yeah, then I will do the oven. The biggest thing with the oven is the door. Okay. And shall I give you a tip? Every door of every oven comes off. You can take your door off. So look it up into YouTube. How to remove the oven door from and your brand and your make or whatever. There will be a video for how to remove the door from your oven. Okay. I had I inherited this oven, so I did not know how to um, do that. I had a belling oven before, and it came apart completely. I could take the sides off. I could, you know, I could um, dismantle the door. I could clean it, and I kept it clean. And I really enjoyed dismantling it, cleaning it, and putting it back together. Right, this oven I inherited, and I could not see. It's not a belling one and I could not see how to remove the door and I thought why can I not get it and I was doing the same thing as I was for my belling door but of course it doesn't work like that okay so then about a couple of years after moving in I thought right I've had enough <laughs> I typed it into YouTube and there it was the little trick that I needed to know from this brand on how to remove your door and of course this door is built differently and I had this drip inside between the two glass panes. Oh my God. And I was, ah, you know, 
that drip was always there because of course you can't reach it and because it was attached to my oven I couldn't get into it from the top because it was a different opening but I knew I could get into it from the bottom up but I couldn't get into that because it was attached to my oven so remove the door put the door be very careful with it I was always careful because of course if you drop it if the glass shatters you know I know Suzanne I know look up on YouTube how to remove your particular brand of door you know the oven brand and yeah toes Ellen indeed and then I I placed a towel on my cooker here and um, you know put a towel down and I've placed my door on there not only will that then mean it's easy for you to clean the door and I could get in between so I had a stick with a sponge stuck on it with elastic and I went in between I made myself that stick so I could do it and then of course Yes, I think it's nearly finished. I think I heard the last spin, Christine, so I'll go and have a look. Then it's so much easier to get into your oven because the door isn't in the way. I mean, again, a life-changing thing. You can actually sit in, I mean, I've got the oven down low. I will have it up in my new kitchen. Um, but I was able to just sit cross-legged in front of my oven and clean it. Do you know how much easier that is? So do please, after the live is finished, after the live is finished, do please go and look up how to remove the door from your oven. It makes so much, it makes a big difference and your oven will be the cleanest in the West, I tell you. I, all, you know, see the thing is, I bake cakes for my crochet ladies and I really you know when I bake cakes for myself I think yeah fine you know I'll eat them but if you're giving away you know if you're giving cake to somebody else um, you know they come to my crochet club I serve them cake it needs to be made hygienically right um, I, I wash my hands I make sure all my utensils that I use are clean, you know, I, I really try and do it as cleanly and hygienically as possible. And, and yes, yes, you have got to find out how to remove the door, yes. Um, and of course, making a, a nice cake that I can give away with a clear conscience is baking it in a clean oven, okay. Um, I. You know, I take pride in what I do. I like giving my ladies cake. I want to make sure that I give them a, a nicely made cake, you know, that doesn't have any remnants of my roast from the other day, right? Um, and also I take a picture of that cake while it's baking and I put it on um, our Facebook group, you know, the crochet club group. And um, yeah, they love seeing the pictures, you know, like, oh, tonight we're having cake, look, it's in the oven, you know, and you cannot have a drip going down your window, your oven door window, when you are going to post this for other people to see, right? No, you can't, okay? And also the light at the back, you can unscrew that, you can unscrew the glass and you can clean that really well so you've got white light again in your oven because that gets really yellowy, browny, you know? <coughs> Fabulous! Ah, yes! That's what I'm here for! That is what I'm here for, okay? So I am... So, do you know what? I, I do the, I, these are things I've, I'm crying again. These are things I've been doing all my life. I, when I bought that first belling oven, I was told the door came off. That, that was my first purchase, you know, as an adult, you know. And I was amazed that the door came off. And now I know that the door will come off. And I've been using that for so, you know, the, the vinegar. The bake the, the the I've been doing all these things for such a long time, 
but of course you can't tell anyone because do you know what I mean you, but now now I can also I didn't realize you know I thought everybody <laughs> everybody knew this do you know what I mean um, these are just things that I I I don't know I find them so normal but apparently not everybody knows and so I am so pleased that you are all here look there's 90 people watching it's amazing that you're here for a cleaning video we do normally do crochet I don't want to sort of deviate from the main ingredient of our channel but yes I'm gonna go Veronica I'm gonna go so I can wipe my tears <laughs> um, but if you find it helpful and if I can pass on my knowledge then oh I've got to sneeze now then you know I'm more than happy to <laughs> that was a big sneeze okay let's have a sip <laughs> thank you thank you I love all of you you do not know what you mean to me okay um, yes give me a thumbs up if I have told you something that you didn't know like for example you could take the oven door off your oven to clean it I'll be back entertain entertain yourselves okay <laughs> <laughs> right okay I have a couple of things to show you first of all let me show you hi there Donna let me show you the blanket okay so it's come out of the dryer uh, washing machine and it's basically dry there's it's really light okay um, and it feels a little bit funny okay it does not feel soft right it does not feel soft so this is how it comes out and I think it, the color is still fine then I have one of these drying racks okay yeah Katrin um, is it Katrin Katie, Katie May, I did not choose the red colour, I inherited it. Uh, so yes, I, I will be changing the red. I don't mind it, but yeah, I'm not 100% I'm not about it, right? Okay, so here we are. There's my drying rack, okay? And what I do with my blanket, I lay it down to dry. So I fold it double and I'll lay it down like this, right? Kenneth, it's the shortest wash cycle that my machine does. Just the shortest one of 30 minutes. There we go, okay? So this is how I, um, you know, how I dry it normally, obviously in a moment. <laughs> in a moment, I am going to put this outside because it's sunny so I normally try and put them outside in the sun to dry uh, in the winter I will put it over a radiator so there's nice hot uh, air coming onto it but this is how I dry it so I don't hang it but I fold it double and I lay it flat so it can dry flat so that's one thing that I want to show you then look at what I've got here
when I took that door off the first time, <coughs> I didn't have a sponge to go into it because I didn't know that my glass wouldn't come off. And so I found this piece of wood. I don't know where it came from. I found it and I thought I might as well keep that for um, cleaning the oven. So I wrote it on there so that whenever, so if Dirk saw it, he wouldn't chuck it. So what I do, um, I attach, oh, can I find any now? Let me have a look. Uh, I normally have those sort of scour sponges, you know, with the green side. I can't find them now. Um, and I put one on each side and with elastic band, I put it on there and then I went in between there. But in the meantime, I've bought, I found this. So this is like a stick with a flea, you know, sort of um, the oven, T-H-E, the oven, yeah, I, I wrote it quickly, <laughs> okay. So now I can use this, it's, this isn't completely long enough, but what I also do, this comes undone. Yes, yeah, some cloth. I put this in there, see? Yeah, microfiber, yeah. So I put this on there. See? And then you can reach much further. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's mad, but it works. And it makes sure I have a clean oven door and no drip in between the two, you know. It, well, I can, uh, I think this one, actually, the top of my thing, I can get something in there. And if you just shake it, I'm sure you can get it out. Or it go in with this and then just, you know, slice, sort of make it come out. I. I don't think you'll lose it. I haven't anyway. Um, but yeah, this sort of, um, this works quite well. Um, and yeah, this, this is how I bought it from like a pound shop. I can't remember exactly. Um, I think this one is for cleaning your blinds so that you've got something thin to go in between them or something. Uh, but I thought, yeah, I'm, I don't have any blinds, but I can use that for in between my glass of my oven door. So, yeah, that is my cleaning hacks. Um, oh, Alicia, well done that you finished your blanket. Yeah, I could put some Velcro on my stick or I could put a um, an extra bit of elastic or something, but it was hard to get it on, so it might, it'll just stay on there, I'm sure. If I lose it, I can just use a stick to coerce it out, I'm sure. Uh, but I haven't had to do that. But yeah, so um, I'll be going and putting that blanket outside because it was nice and sunny outside earlier when I was there. What I am also going to do is do my dish, uh, my my washing machine. So I'll put a cup of vinegar in, put my soda crystals on the top and then put it on the hottest wash. Um, the Using vinegar in your washing machine also prevents lime scale from building up inside your machine. So I've never actually have uh, had problems with my machines because I've always used um, you know, vinegar at, at some point. Um, I, I have to admit, I did buy fabric conditioner last year to try it out, and I just don't like the smell. I do not like the smell of it. I use it up as quickly as I could because I was just not enjoying use you know, the smell. Plus, um, your clothes have this coating almost, um, and towels don't take up any water when you um, use conditioner and they do when you use um, vinegar so when I dry up with my towels 
they dry you know you go over it once and it's dry if you used conditioner on your tea towels then you know it takes a long time for you you know it doesn't dry really it just leaves the water on there so yeah um i uh, uh how should i say it i've always used vinegar for many things um and it's kept certain appliances of mine um maybe cleaner than others and i've always enjoyed using it because a it's cheap b it's doesn't smell the blanket here it doesn't smell of vinegar so it's had two coatings of vinegar this blanket so in the beginning and then one in the conditioner thing right and it doesn't smell of it and even if it did smell of it now once it's dry the smell is gone um, and that's the main thing that people think oh my washing is going to smell of vinegar I'm going to smell as if I've I've been to the ship shop um, no it doesn't smell and you know you could if it's like a blanket like this I just drop some um, drops of um, lavender oil essential oil on it and it's fine so you know it works right everyone I think it's about time I started this roast <laughs> <What is this? laughs> I'm going to do that chicken peel the potatoes parsnips carrots I've got beetroot fennel but it means I cook once, we eat three times. <laughs> Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> so that helps. And also, um, I am actually, now that I've been talking about it, I am looking forward to cleaning the oven uh, afterwards. Beetroot, beetroot. Oh, I might as well get it out. Beetroots, there we go. I've got one here. The red the red stuff so um, i just scrub it and cut it in wedges and put that in with my roasted vegetables and everything turns red if you touch it um so it's beetroot yes it's we like it roasted so and this is quite a clean version to show you <laughs> right everyone ah yes red beet yeah here it's called beetroot so everyone, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. No, it wasn't really a tutorial, was it? Um, just tips on how to use the um, vinegar, on how to wash your blanket, but also do some other things with that vinegar. So if you do go to the shop and you find this vinegar or cleaning vinegar, then I am sure, you know, don't buy it really expensively on Amazon, but get just get it in a shop, okay? Probably a honey and mustard, Veronica. A honey and mustard coating on the chicken, and then I can make, with that, I can make a honey and mustard gravy. Yummy! <laughs> Thank you all so very much for watching. Leave me a thumbs up and I will see you guys tomorrow for a normal Sunday live with the blankets, of course, because we are going so well with the cow. I am waiting for you to tell me how you are doing with that. So thank you very much for watching. And next week, yeah, next week I will be baking some scones. So see you then as well. Bye everyone! Bye! Bye bye! Thank you! Yeah, go and find out how to remove that oven door. <laughs> bye!